look, dude. I've even gone deeper now, and I still haven't got it. Oh, got it. He's on. Yes. Yeah. Wow, it's not even that big of a fish, too. He's just a freaking screamer. What a cool little fish. Yeah. Nice. There he is. Got him. Got him. Oh, got him. Oh nice. yeah. Oh, oh, he literally just about ripped the rod out of my hand. All right, what's up everyone out there? Welcome to another episode of Addicted Life. Today, me and Jordan decided to make the drive. We're all the way up into Canada. That was a long drive last night, dude. Hey. 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 So we're on a river here, unknown river, but we're gonna try to chase some steelhead. It's, the conditions are amazing. We came up here and honestly, we didn't think it was gonna even be this good as what it looks like. It was a day it was supposed to blow out. We're supposed to get a big storm tonight. So we're riding out the wave of the storm coming in. We're gonna be fishing in some bad weather, but we got some great conditions to find some big fish. Exactly, I'm rigging, I'm rigging up some bobber dogging. I'm gonna try some yarnies. We're gonna be fishing addicted worms, the whole shebang. It's gonna be a good day. I got a good feeling about it. We got little showing on the camera stay tuned guys do not forget if you guys are liking these addicted life episodes smash that thumbs up we really need you guys to hit that thumbs up button because it helps us with these episodes and helping spread our channel out to more people on youtube so thank you so much stay tuned hopefully some steelhead coming up oh you went with the gray weight today huh the Matches, gray weight makes a big difference the silty river color yeah I see a lot of gray rocks. If you're not fishing gray, you ain't fishing. I right. might have to borrow one of those. I didn't bring any red hooks though, so I don't know what's gonna happen. I love how I love how Marlon. It's been a bead bite lately, and so instead of the bead, he he doesn't want to fish the bead, so he puts a yarny on instead. Right, boys. <laughs> to stay true to his word. Beads don't work. Only yarnies. It's gonna be the test today. Jordan's fishing a double bead setup. And I'm fishing a yarny. Let's see who catches more fish. Fish versus yarny. It might be the chubby float too. I might have to completely re rethink my setup here. Fish! I got you right there. I did. I broke my neck almost. How's all your guys' winter steelhead season going? You guys are having a good season so far? I'm pretty stoked with how it's been so far. Even though we've been dealing with some definitely some high water conditions, a little bit tougher at times, when we've gotten opportunities and the river's been in good shape, it's been a good bite. So. Hopefully you guys are smashing some fish. Drop some comments below. Let us know how your season's been. Addicts, Jordan is not on his A game today. He's on his C game. Let me pull it out. I'm gonna have a come behind one here. All you addicts out there waiting for our addicted floats, here they are. We keep teasing them to you guys and you guys can't buy them, but this is another variation of a round. We had some issues on the last production model, and so we're testing a new round, and so far so good. So it's looking like these are gonna be out in stores very, 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 very soon. I know we've been saying that for like, what, three months? These ones are dog toy approved. Yeah, these ones are dog. We already had Little, we were playing fetch with Little on one of these just to see how the durability of it is. And they're holding up a lot better than previous models, so we're stoked, stay tuned. Again, I, I think we're gonna, like in that kind of stuff, we're gonna see them as we float through. I'm gonna watch them shoot up, and then I think we'll be able to stop and catch them. Just because there's not a lot of pressure. So one thing to you guys, something I preach to my people a lot, it's something that we, I think, even though we're fishing a small river today, I always try to practice is not hero drifting or long lining a lot of these runs. It takes a lot of, I don't know, what would you say? It takes a lot of nerve a lot of the time to shorten up your drift like that. But what happens a lot of times, especially with beads, the worst place you can hook a bead is at a downriver angle. You normally want to hook them in between your 45s, and that's all because of the hook placement. If you let it go way down to the tail out, standing at the top, that bobber will go down and it will be a bite, but you won't stick that fish well enough to actually, to actually land it. And then as soon as you hook it, you're at that straight downriver angle with all that tension, and you give that fish that straight point of contact to work around that hook, and they pretty much always come off. I'm going with the addicted jig. Old faithful. Yeah, Marlon, and look at the durability of these things. This jig's been sitting on the top of my roof rack, getting eaten by fish three or four times. The material almost looks like my hair, kind of dreaded out a little bit. And she's still rocking. Sink it jig? Oh yeah. This thing has probably caught 10 fish. Just been beating the bottom, still got all the paint. Old faithful red and white.
Oh my God. That very, dude. I almost fell over when I said hook. Whew. Puckered me right up. Oh yeah, didn't even touch bottom through there again. Cripes. That's the one thing about that other, if we would've went to that other river, dude, is you're in that freaking canyon like the entire time, so there's never any wind. It's so nice. Those other options weren't gonna have any wind. This river, you're like out in the freaking open, open Lahara, the whole time. It's all right though. If you ain't steelhead fishing in this kind of conditions, you ain't steelhead fishing, Jordan. Be a man. I'm not cold. I just, there's only a couple things I hate in this world and wind's one of them. The other one's stoplights and traffic. Cheating women. <laughs> Ooh, cheating women for sure. Yeah. I'm due for a spinner fish, man. Fish? Something grabbed it. It might have been something small. I think it hit my jig. Oh, I want to get one. I cannot. I, look, dude, I've even gone deeper now and I still haven't got it. Oh, got it. He's on. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Little, that's enough. That was so cool, Doc, come on, do it. Yeah. We knew there was one in here. Oh, dude, that was the exact same spot that I got the bobber down the first time. Ooh, the old Think It series. Yeah, I'll that with you. We're gonna have to keep this fish in the water anyhow. That was the coolest bite, first run, craziness I've ever seen. Wow, it's not even that big of a fish, too. He was just a freaking screamer. He's just dying foam. Okay, ready? Yeah, the best way to use these addicted nets, you guys, one thing we see a lot of comments on people are learning, you want to point that rod tip up river, that fish is going to go up wherever you're pointing that rod tip. See, I point it down, he goes down. I point it up, he goes up in the current. What you want to do is always get the guy, get the fish above the guy with the net, turn its head to the surface and roll him towards the guy with the net. Yeah, he shouldn't scoop or do anything. It's all the guy fighting the fish. Yeah, the guy who's fighting the fish is guiding the fish into the net. You're just scooping it. Just like this. Whoa, just kidding, he's not done. A little dimer. <laughs> this is a fiery little dude. Is that on a sink it? That's on the sink it, Must man. Must add sink it I picked series, it back baby. up after I threw the spinner through there. I think I pissed him off. Okay, see that right head on the surface? Oh, oh not oh, yet, not oh. yet. This thing's messing you up, dude. <laughs> My hand hurts. All right, here we go. Straight up river, head to the surface, oh. and right towards the net. This way. Sweet. And then look at that. Give me some. You see that, guys? Look at what that fish did when he got in the cradle. As soon as you cradle the fish, he just chills, starts to recover. You can hold him in the water, keep him in the water, take care of him. And then you we can what? open him up and get a look at him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that jig. Just stuck. What a cool little fish. Yeah, it's a nice one. Heck yeah. I like how his pink, this is what I love about steel. Look at, see how his pink on his cheek goes into his bottom left, right next to his fin? You what see a, that? Yeah. That's right cool. Yeah, look at that. What see a perfect it? little fish. All right, little Beauty. buddy. Beauty. Thanks for playing. You want me just to let him go? Yeah, oh yeah, we're good. Wrong way, dude. Let me go. He wants his picture taken. There we go. Oh, look at him right there. And he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. Good job, lid man. Woo! -hoo. Woo! -hoo. <laughs> On the red and white, dude. The old faithful. That water's cold. Duh. Of course it came through. That was a nice fish, eh? I love Canada steelhead fishing. You guys have so many amazing rivers, and we just picked one. We just pointed to one on a map and drove 12 hours and got there. What, you get a white fish? I dumped it, it actually might be a trout. It's funny how when you're fishing a beater, a yarn, it's just so obvious when you're getting a bite. You know, like a lot of people mistake, mistake bobber downs for, for fish, but when you finally like, start to really get into hooking them a lot on the beads. It's just, there's a special way that bobber goes down. Oh God, you didn't. 
Oh no. Under bed. Two for two. There it is. It's top bead. Top bead day. Right there. Dude, it bumped dude. last time. Right there. Yeah, that was a fish. I think I got two bites here, man. I didn't even come near bottom that time. All these bead fishermen, they, they talk about how like every single bobber down is a fish. Jordan and Popoff sometimes will like, I'll call them and they'll be like, yeah, we hooked like 45 today. Cause they count like every time their bobber went under and they like had like a little bit of pressure on it when they set the hook on their bead. Huh. These jig heads are whole, dude, I'm in like purposely dragging this thing along the bottom. And look at that. It's not even like, yeah. Money. It's so tiny, it's so cold out here. What do you want? What? No, no, no. Little, what are you doing? What are you doing? You hungry? <laughs> I <don't> want to <laughs> coke. <laughs> You're full of it today, aren't you, bud? The big old river sandwich. I like the butt pieces. Jordan cuts a piece of sandwich for himself, everyone, and just freaking doesn't cut anything for me and Sean. Real nice guy. What do you mean? She's sliced and diced, brother. Some tiny you want one? Do you, ever cook, do you ever cook lunch for your clients? Sometimes if they ask. All the time. Take the barbecue out there. Maybe some hot soup, some elk stew. Mm. Lots of pepperonis. That's what I could go for right now, something warm. I know, we should have brought the little, the little Jet crack oil. stove, yeah. A little lunch break action. I'm feeling a little warmer already. I'm feeling way warmer. Maybe it was me trying to drop the tree on myself, but <laughs> stop my heart rate up. All right, addicts. I think we're about halfway down the river so far. We had one opportunity, one fish to the boat. We're still searching. It's a really, really cold, windy, wet day here in the upper north of Canada. No, just kidding, we're in the Pacific Northwest. But it's a cold, windy day, but we're gonna keep searching, keep heading down the river. Hopefully we can find some more fish. We're throwing worms, we're throwing beads, yarnies, a couple spoons, spinners. We're throwing the farm at them. So let's go try to find some more. So addicts, when you're trying to combat the wind like this, something, we're getting our butts kicked today out here, but there's a couple of tricks that you can do. That's a fish, that's a fish, that's a fish. Oh my God. Couldn't catch up to us. Oh. On the freaking Arnie. Arnie. Well, back to what I was saying. Just like you were saying too, the problem was, was you see how much belly I had in my line from the wind? I couldn't catch up to him. He was like running with it. <laughs> this bomber was just going free. Oh my God. But one of the things you're gonna have to do is usually switch to a presentation that doesn't require a perfect drift. Like, you know, so we're we went straight to bobber dogging now that the wind really started to howl. You want something that's gonna drag really hard, maybe add a little more weight. And one other thing I wanna like specify on is how you're mending your line, how you're placing your line on the water surface to kill that wind. You're gonna have to keep more line on the water in this case, because it won't be going as fast as the breeze is. So like I'll make big mends really fast and then slap my line back down in the water. I want you to show them, show them when I cast what I'm talking about. Instead of letting my line get caught too much by the water, I'll let it, or excuse me, by the wind, I'll throw it down on the water and you can see how it actually stays right on the water there instead of getting blown around. I'll lay it back down right away when I bend. And that way I can still get that natural drift and let it drag and that wind's not gonna be pulling my my float, my setup downriver faster than the current. Oh, come on. I want it too bad, I think what it is. There he is, got him, got him, got him. Oh yeah, yeah, on the swing, baby. Oh, that was so good! Woo! Dude, That's a nice fish too. that was everything a guy could dream of for a, like a spinner, spoon, 
swing bite. Oh, oh, he literally just about ripped the rod out of my hand. Look out, little. Coming up. This rod, too, man, this X rod, that is just like, there's so much sensitivity. The minute that spinner blade stopped, I, I could feel the fish. It was just like, it didn't even have the dink. It was just straight to wah, wah, wah. Oh, there he goes. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's all that work. That's all right. That's all right. Damn, that was a chromie. Another perfect fish. He was chrome, huh? The, yeah, it was a chrome head. Sometimes that's how it goes, though. You freaking hook, bang, bang, two in a row, and lose both yeah, of same them. Same thing as the last hole, too. Lose literally both of them. That's all right, though. That's still fun. Yeah, it was so cool. The way that I was just like, it was. Like, I wonder if that. Fi I think that fish followed it from the far side. That's kind of what I was. Because it was like as soon as the spinner straightened out, like it came to that straight point, it hit it. And it was one of those. It's like it's either bottom or a fish, and I just grabbed the spool and lifted. And it just went right to the head shake. I thought I had him hooked really good. I wonder, wonder why he came off. What do you? What bead are you giving me? A little secret sauce. <laughs> it is cold, guys. I wish you guys could ex like. Well, you guys know. You guys are steelhead fishermen. If you're watching this, and if you're not, just know that it's freezing out here. All the Midwest boys are just laughing. I know. All the guys like, in the Midwest up. are like, it's like, shut up. It's like three degrees over here. It's Negative a three. Kind of cold though. It is a different kind of cold for sure. I ain't saying their cold ain't cold, but our cold's cold too. You know, it's all cold. It's all cold. <laughs> it's honestly not even that cold today. It's just the wind is making it cold. Yeah. It's probably in the what, thir like upper 30s? Yeah, I'd say 40 ish. We're pretty far up the mountain. Addicts, I'm switching to the Yarny bead. I was running double yarny, but I'm noticing that that second yarny, it's not getting down quick enough as, as I want it to. So I'm gonna switch to a little bead here. Okay guys, so here's what I did. I got my medium bobber dog and float, but I switched to a half ounce Dave's Tangle Free. And the way these work is they have like a, basically I got it on a three-way swivel with a drop down so you can just easily attach it to that. And then I'm running about, what is that, Jordan 20 inches? probably 18 to 20 inches to my yarny and then another 18 to 20 inches maybe a little bit more to the bead doubled up game time so one one huge advantage addicts to balsa and the reason we like these addicted floats and the reason we've created them out of balsa is balsa registers everything it you can feel, I mean, you're gonna see every little tick that your jig or worm or whatever you decide to fish underneath the float, you're gonna be able to register whatever that jig is doing underneath the water with the balsa. It just is way more sensitive. It can just feel everything. Whereas foam has a tendency to, you don't see everything with a foam float. So that's the reason we stuck with the balsa. That's the reason that they're $4.99 a piece because balsa is a lot more, it's a lot tougher to work with, a lot harder to make and get a little bit more expensive as a material, whereas foam is super cheap. The other real advantage to balsa that we don't talk about very often is if you lose it, you're not really littering, it's wood. You know, it's balsa. Yeah, there's some paint on there, but you know what I mean? It's not as bad as like foam going out into the freaking, into the ocean, but there is a lot of good foam. Would, anybody would ever fish foam again. Oh God. Well, that's the thing, I, what I was getting ready to say is like, there, there's no getting away from it. We're gonna have to fish foam and I'm sure we'll have some foam float, floats coming out. I'm just saying that it's kind of a cool advantage to these fixed is that it, they are balsa. Oh my God, it's gone. Are you oh my God. There. It, it was What's running it? down river with it, dude. Are you kidding me? It was in, up in that riffle too. All these people watching definitely know this isn't Canada because we didn't catch enough fish. <laughs> I'm sure they have two fish days in Canada. Bull. I feel like if you're in Canada and you steal a fish, you only have like 10 fish minimums. But maybe that's just like what I want to be a reality, you know? Maybe I'm just dreaming that. It's not actually something. Well, the day 
is winding down a little bit. The takeout is in sight, but uh, there's still some really good holes left. Marlon needs to get his fish. Our fingers are crossed still for a big one. I guess that's kind of always the case, right? Obviously. Yeah, we only, we only want to catch a big one. Hold on, watch out, little. Nimble. Nimble, little man. Well, a couple more holes left, it's 2.30. We still got a lot of daylight, but we got a little bit of a drive home, so we're gonna keep banging it out. What are Let's we gonna see. catch the next one on? I don't know, hopefully we can get one more at least. Yeah. All we gotta do is try. All we gotta do is try. This don't look too bad. Looks like it, might it could be one of the nicest spots we fished all day. This looks like it could have a fish or two. I'm putting Miss America on. This is what we call Miss America, ladies and gentlemen. White mustad addicted jig head, red pearl, blue tail, addicted worm. Oh. That looked good, didn't oh, it? I just said it held tight even. Got me all excited. You saw that, right? That was like straight up pulled under the water. It's gotta be a trout. Yeah, it went under and like swam. Yeah, it's a trout. It's gotta be a trout. Got him? You like, oh no, it's a trout. Cutthroat or something. Oh God. Oh. Whew. About threw out my back on that hook set. Poor little guy got stung. Wow. There's the... Look where he's hooked too. Is it a trout or a steel hook? Looks like a little rainbow. Or maybe just a steely smolt. Whew. Let myself calm down a little bit. Oh my god. Huh? You see that? It got hit. Yeah. But it looked more like a it looked like a cutthroat or something, didn't it? I don't know. All I saw was the line go slack and that tip dim near. It definitely got hit. Hit the front of the boat. Oh, oh, oh! Trout or something. Oh! Oh! It's like a trout or something. I knew we were gonna get one here though. I called it. We didn't specify. Oh, that don't count. It's, not even it's like a spoon. steelhead smoke. It's not even as big as the spoon. Or, I mean, as the plug. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's how our day's going. Savage takedowns. Cutties. Is it a cutty? Yeah. Quick little shoot down. We accomplished what we came to do. Caught some fish. Marlon lost one. Did we lose two? No, just one. Just lost the one. Well, we did it. Oh. One more day alive. It's like the circus clowns at the carnival. How many rods can you get in these rod holders? We're gonna try seven. Wow, like a glove. All right, dude, well, there we have it. That was the day. It was freaking cold and windy, dude. It got warm right when we got to the takeout, <laughs> ironically know. enough. I know, well, it wasn't honestly that long. We freaking started fishing about 9.30 and fished till 2.30, so it was a pretty quick little rip down. I had fun, I got to see a new river, got to float a new river, got to catch a fish on a new river, and hell, I think that was a success all that the way. That one fish that we did get was, not, I wish we could have seen that one you lost in that spot. Yeah, that was a cute. Did you get a good look at it? It was or? a cute hen, yeah. Nice, it was probably just a little bit bigger. Just little it was bit. a nice fish. Chromey. Yeah, that was nice. Chromey. All right, everyone. Thanks again so much for tuning into these. We appreciate it. If you guys could help us out, smash that thumbs up button, share this out to your friends and family, and we'll see you guys next week. Later.